What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh Wan. And once again, we're back at it to answer more questions from you guys in another episode of For the Greater. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. first. Also, if you enjoy uh, listening to us talk about Warhammer 40k and other random stuff, consider supporting the channel with a super thanks. If you do, you could ask us anything and we will answer it in the next episode. In other words, you will be leading the next greater walk. And this question comes from Condorm69. Would or could Isha heal the Emperor if the Big E busted, don't ask me how, her out of Nurgle's hands? I thought you were going to say something else right there. And could they escape back into real space? So th we haven't actually talked about Isha in a really, Isha in a really long time. Mm -hmm. And just the lore of the Eldar and their gods hasn't been talked about ever since um, Ivrain. Yeah, the uh, creation of a new god. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, uh, Inead. Inead. Inead Ivrain was the one that kind of helped. Yeah. So let's break it down and explain who Isha is. Yeah, so Isha is the goddess of rebirth and creation, or something similar to that, fertility. She helped the Eldari, because she saw them as her children, to basically have a way to keep reproducing after Slanesh was uh, basically fucking everything up. Yeah, also gave them supposedly the... Um Stones. And the soul stones, the yeah, soul so stones. that, that Slanesh wouldn't eat them. Their souls would be held captive in here, protecting them from Slanesh. And she's also been helping the entire galaxy, because even though she has been taken captive by Nurgle, Nurgle's using her as a plaything, an experiment, and he's putting all these poxes, toxins, and deadly d diseases into her to see how they would react. And ever since she has these diseases on her, obviously she's a goddess of rebirth and fertility, so she's able to heal. And then she'll whisper the cures, the potions, the means necessary to rid these basically poxes throughout the galaxy to the inhabitants of not just the Eldar, but most sentient life. Yeah, so if there was a way for the Emperor to somehow connect with Isha through the warp and say, hey, how could you fix me while I'm on the Golden Throne? Mm. Um, I can see something like that happening in the future. Yeah. Is it a kind of a foreshadow that Gilliman and Yvrain hooked up? Maybe Emperor and uh, Isha were guys going to hook up and have another type of rebirth. Yeah, because I think the Emperor has always had, um, what's the female? The Erda? Erda. But, you know, he has the side piece, Isha. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, if you looked at a previous video from years back, I also did the end of 40k, and that meant that the Eldar were going to try and break out Isha in order to have a better chance at taking out Chaos. Yeah. So basically, Yvrain gets all the uh, soul swords, and they basically go into the gardens of Nurgle to free her. And I think this is going to be a make or break type of storyline for the Eldar. Because if they can't, then they all get corrupted by Chaos, Nurgle specifically. And if they do, then it's a huge boon to their forces. Like, they, li they literally have a god on their side at this point. Because we, we see Segura for the um, Harlequins, and he hasn't done anything. Like, he's not trying to help the uh, captured gods. He's not trying to really help the Eldar at all. He's just kind of there in the background laughing. Yeah, but it could be because his whole thing is the last act. So True. Segra could be prepping the last act not to help the actual Eldar, but to help the Emperor free Isha. Okay. And maybe that's his thing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But who knows? Yeah. Yeah, because right now, when it comes to GW and the Eldar, they ain't getting much of anything. No, because nobody's buying Eldar. Mm -hmm. Who plays Eldar, honestly, yeah. except everybody that wants to win? <laughs> <laughs> right, because they're, they're pretty good on the tabletop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let us know what you guys think about another human Eldar alliance and uh, Isha being a more prominent figure. Yeah, it would be a good story to tie the rebirth of the Emperor as a human, mm -hmm. not a god. Next question comes from Young Ho 87 Do you think it was right for Percherabo or to make Percherabo a demon prince? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Percherabo is really badass. Um, you could say he almost carried the entire Horus Heresy on his back and they were the reason why they got so far. But I think him ascending to apotheosis and demonhood is something that needed to happen. Yeah, because it's undivided. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, Perturabo does not get, or he was not empowered by um, one individual chaos god, and it was through his 
brother Lorgar's machinations mm -hmm. that ended up causing him to become a demon. Um, so yeah, and I think this kind of helped to show us that you can become a uh, a demon. demon without having to pledge yourself to one of the four gods. And also not be like a name character like, uh, what's his name, um, Bellacor? Yeah, Bellacor or even Vashtor. Yeah, well, Vashtor is a whole different thing. Because Vashtor is not a god, but I yet. don't think he's either like a... Well, he's a demigod, I guess, whatever that means. They haven't really explained it yet. Yeah. Um, could Portrabo ever become a uh, demon of Vashtor? Probably not, right? I don't think so, because that would mean he would have to re-pledge himself to Vashtor, and I think he's already pledged himself to, like, the Dark Forces or just chaos in general. Yeah, it would be cool for him to pledge himself to the the Soul... What is it called? The, the um, Soul Forge? The Soul Forge. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because that's basically a fifth party, I guess you could say, because if, if a Chaos God decides to attack this, this Forge of Souls, basically any and all demon engines, regardless if they're all allied to that god, has to go and defend it. So that's pretty cool. Pretty extreme, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, good question. Uh, next one. Mitchell Johnson says, do you think that the gene stealers will ever sympathize with our side against the common enemy because of our genes? No. Yeah, gene stealer cults are always going to answer to one true thing, and that is the tyrannid hive mind. Right, even though, like, if you are playing a narrative campaign, if you're doing a crusade and you want a reason why a gene stealer cult army would ally or ally themselves with an imperial army, you could say that, like, they saw the orcs as a bigger threat, so mm -hmm. they're not going to fight the humans, or they saw the their chaos as the bigger threat, and you know, that kind of stuff. But in a grand scale, no. Yeah, I mean, if it helps their cause, yeah, it'll seem like they'll help humanity, but eventually they're always going to answer to you know, notorious B.I.G. Yeah, the big one. Uh, which, the big one asks, if I get reincarnated, do you think it's possible pos Possible, I'll come back as a five-pound bean and cheese burrito from Big Juan's Mexican Eatery? Yeah, maybe. That's a big burrito, five pounds? Yeah. It's like you're eating a baby at that point. And it happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Rats do it with their offspring. Mm -hmm. If they feel stressed, they'll eat them. Mm -hmm. That is a big burrito, five pounds. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, next question. Tabla hands. Who would win in an all-out war between the Tyranids and the Necrons? Necrons. Yeah, I feel like as much as Tyranids are a threat, and we don't know their numbers, the Necrons have always been a threat. They're a threat right now, and they're not all awoken yet, and they're not even working together. Um, not just that, but they have the freaking Catan on their side. Yeah, the Tyranids, it'll be an interesting fight, but I think it, it's going to be overwhelming Necron win. They also have that one map. What's it called? A Celestial Orrery? Yeah. Where they could just point and like have that thing be obliterated from existence. So basically it's, yeah. um, what was the military tactic? Um, something in Burn? Crash and uh, Burn? No. Scorch? Scorched Earth. Yeah, Scorched, scorched Earth. Earth. Yeah. yeah. So basically like saying, well, Tyranids aren't going to consume anything from this section. Oh, this uh, tendril is going towards here. Nope, all those plants are gone. Yeah. So now it's just going to like, yeah, there's nothing for them to eat. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Next question comes from Neo Acid Creep. When are you guys going to get merch? I want a Simping for Gersh hoodie and a Finna Pound the Sound Alchemist <laughs> shirt. Finna Pound on the front alchemist on the back yeah if you're gonna get a shirt or a sweater or a hoodie, hoodie like that you have to have it worded that way yeah for sure mm -hmm. yeah and uh i'll gladly put my body on the line so that you can make an awesome illustration of the sound getting pound did yeah, yeah. <laughs> um use some um what is it called uh, clip art <laughs> yeah from like 30 years ago yeah um, and I like how everything is sexual in, in both of those pieces of merch. Mm -hmm. uh, because we are sexual beings. Yeah. We are of Slanesh. Uh, which Eschatonian 666 says, Signs of Slanesh. Put out arms. Oh, this is the sign of Slanesh. Because mm. in the past, we, somebody asked, the um, Imperial Aquila sign? Do you want to show it? Is that... Um, and he's saying that the sign of Sl Slanesh would be put out arms, hands folded down, with the back on them facing the other people, thumbs out. 
Okay. Uh, connect tips of thumbs and index finger and close other three fingers. Sure. Slanesh sign. I don't get it. Like connect tips of thumbs and index finger and close the other three fingers. And then hands folded down with the back of them facing the oh, other people. Like that. Ah, vagina and clit. Yeah, I gotta cut my nails, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's like that. Yeah. Not all of them are the same. It's up to you to understand them. Next question. Uh, this one's by TN Combat Medic. So you're not supposed to be cloning in the Imperium, but the Krieg's guardsmen receive cloning vats and equipment. Why? Shh, don't say anything. You're not supposed to say anything. Yeah, and it says, didn't the orcs also have at one time a truce with the Imperium? Why? Also, what about the truce between the Necron King and Sanguinius? Why? I'm incredibly new to the universe, and I read a book a month about the lore, so forgive me if I'm incorrect. No, you're not, and I think that um, it's really easy if you're a newcomer to 40K to see each individual factions as like a like a... A static, always Monolith, this, kind of, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the thing about 40K is that, it, like you've said time and time again, it's a sandbox. You have certain traits and abilities and like rules and laws, but there's always outliers, there's always exceptions. You would think, oh, there's no way that the orcs will never not fight. But you know, you'll have some docile uh, creatures here and there. <laughs> but at the end of the day, might makes right with the orcs, so they all die, and that's why you don't see them. Yeah, and think of each individual faction and their leader as their own person. Mm -hmm. So you might have a, yeah, like you said, an orc captain that does ally with the Imperium, works with them, and does not destroy them at that moment. Right. Same thing with the Necrons. The Necrons allied with the Blood Angels, but it was more to just gather data. Mm -hmm. So was there a back thing? Yeah, but like... Yeah, it happens. Yeah. It, like, yeah, these things happen. There's never a 100% right, 100% wrong type thing. Um, and that's the fun of 40K. Because even though we're reading and seeing the galaxy, the Imperium, through the eyes of, I guess you could say the Imperium, they're, they're not correct. Right. They don't yeah. even know what year they're in. Yeah, nobody yeah. knows anything, mm -hmm. but everybody pretends that they do. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Fuck what you heard, act like you know. Mm -hmm. um, or like they say, in whose line is it anyway? Where the points don't matter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Mm -hmm. The points don't really matter in 40K, even in the tabletop. Because yeah. you give up on turn three anyways because you're hungry and you want to mm -hmm. go eat. Mm -hmm. And those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and talking, and we'll talk tomorrow. That's right. It's been The Sound Alchemist here with Gershwan. And we are out. Oh.